an example? Yeah. We're coming out with the distributor. <coughs> you have sections that there is. You notice here? Ice. That's ice. The fins. So. So there's a kink of restriction or something in the. Going in one of the leads, going to the top deck. Could it be too that the uh, that the fins are all uh, smushed together and then airflow? That that happens too. You know, uh, see, there are times when people go to clean this fin, and instead of cleaning dung wash to follow the, how the fins are, they go sideways with a brush. Oh, that's stupid. Yeah, they 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 forget they're painting. Yeah, they well. Who are the painters? You used to be young, right? Yeah, they do. 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 Probably what, but what I will do before I really go in deep into diagnosing this, I put it into a manual defrost and melt off this ice. You need the ice gone because without the ice gone, you can never tell exactly what's going on here. Right. So you put into manual defrost and you just let it. And just let it melt, and then you take it from there and do your regular troubleshooting. We shot it up and see what happens. Actually, do a visual check of what's going on here. And if you see the Touching. same pattern, touch with your hands, right? You not necessarily, but you should be able to see the uh, build up here. And if you see the same pattern, then you know um, I'm probably starving on one of those. Um, yeah, because if this thing is. Um, there was another picture, I think, coming up on the other side. Right, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's ice built up from um, probably this did not go into a defrost. That's what it says. It missed a defrost. Uh, and you find the, that. And that happens <laughs> if your defrost clock, if the clock motor itself <laughs> stops and it stays here without <laughs> advancing. You lose your power. Right? Uh, Not really. <laughs> <laughs> it fails. If the clock motor fails, you get that. Uh, or there are times when <laughs> it goes right up to the point where it needs to flip the switch over for defrost, but the motor does not have the strength anymore to do it. Uh, because the all the gears get rusted. And I've seen that happen. Can't talk at all. Alright? The load is too much for that motor. That that's it. It's the same motor that you find in this little clock here. I mean, they're not strong. Oh. You know? And I've seen that happen already. So this one, chances are it did not go into a defrost. This one in here, definitely, it is a, um, we do have a problem. But I w like I said, I would take the ice out, start it up, and see um, if I'm, what kind of pattern I'm getting here. Right? <coughs> In this case, if I'm getting ice, everything here is getting a frost line, except for here, it has to be something just downstream of this distributor tube in, that capillary tube. And what if it goes into the evaporator? Where? In, what if, it's, what if it goes into the evaporator coils? Yeah, you see where it goes in? Yeah. The problem is probably right Right at that. At that point. But if it's in deeper, would you? Well, if it's in deeper, the only thing I can do is probably cut off that tube. And pull the trigger. And you screw it, basically. Yeah, yeah, I cut it off and block it off, and hopefully I get enough cool. refrigeration from okay. there. Okay. You just saw it. You and that's where you tell your customer that listen, you have to end up changing his blower unit to me as well start saving some money. Oh, okay. Do they have to brush to clean the fin? Yeah. Yes, you do fin have brushes comb. to clean the fin. Uh, fin comb. They have fin, fin, fin brushes, fin comb, fin whisk. Yeah. And um, they also have chemicals you can clean up with. Yeah, yeah. 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 Then you got to drive back, right? Yeah.
No, no. not the evaporator. It's uh, self rinsing. Uh, now they the have condensation the rinses it. Yeah. For, for food? Yes, yeah, yeah, you spray it on and allow it to stay there for about 50 minutes, then you turn on the system. <coughs> the condensation that forms washes off whatever crap is on there. Yeah. You know. But um, <coughs> you know, there are some times that it's so, so bad that I will normally take all the fans out, uh, disconnect them, remove them, and <coughs> spray this with regular coil cleaner, let it foam up and then get the hose and wash it out. It's okay, you can wash it. Yeah. It's waterproof. Yeah. Of course. That's the same thing. You can turn it on when it's wet, on every dry. You can do what? You can turn it on while it's wet and you spray it off. Yeah. Because when the while the system is under refrigeration, this coil is always wet. Uh -huh. Alright? This is the this freezer coil is the only one that's dry. Freezer coil is only wet. If that's wet, then you're not getting enough refrigeration for your box. Okay, that always has to be dry. Freezers basically will dry out anything. No humidity. No humidity. So bad, bad fan. Bad fan because uh, frost build up in one area that where the fan is not spinning or where there's not enough air. Or if it's blocked. All right. Or if it's blocked, block, you will get ice build up in that section. Yeah. All right. Not the whole thing because simple reason is the other section has enough air passing through so you get the adequate heat exchange. The part that's blocked, you don't get heat exchange in that section. So, and what will happen? When I begin to form ice and I evaporate, the, what happens to my suction line? It drops. So pressure line. drops. Pressure drops, temperature drops, suction temperature line begins to freeze up and yeah. it begins to creep right back to the compressor. Yeah. Yeah. The, the liquid. And once, the, the, the once I'm, um, I stop on the suction line, it, chances are liquid refrigerant is going to go back to that compressor. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's what happened. It went all the way from his attic outside down the line, set straight to the compressor. Frost. Yep, and sometimes it will encase the whole compressor. I have um, I've seen ice on a compressor where you can't even see the compressor. <laughs> you only know the compressor is there because you know that the system is supposed to have a compressor and it's supposed to be there. You know? That's the only way you know, but I just nobody look at that and pay attention. To that. Nobody goes up. They don't climb up there. They no, just, well, I'll I'll just talking even an outside one inside of your house. I don't know. See, my middle motor is um, broken. Rotation's reversed. <coughs> yeah, yeah, what yeah, happened? All the fans are sucking me when, the, when yeah. these two. Well, it's just here. This one starts spinning in the yeah, opposite right. direction. So it's going to blow cold Both. air across, the across here. Alright. So you see how it, it's going to take some of this here. I see why running. the ice is there because of that fan died. Yeah. That fan is the middle fan. Died, so that's right. why there's ice over yes, that. Yes, because there's no the airflow, therefore no heat exchange. Mm -hmm. And you will see these patterns and they will... They, because one of the things when you go in and look at these tree fans, you will see that spinning. And you'll notice that there's a different speed and going the opposite but way. But sometimes the speeds are not that much different. And not all the time you can tell if it's going in the opposite direction yeah, because it's moving so be fast. So. What I normally do, there's typically there's a switch on the side here. You turn it off and you stand up and look at them. Because we, I already know that one of those fans, that this fan is working, that's just conforming. That's a good test question. <laughs> For all you know, it's probably on the test. <laughs> yeah. For all you know? <laughs> so, Okay, walk-in door problem. 
Guys, if I have a walk-in box with a um, leak in gaskets, this may sound kind of contrary to logic, but if the door is leaking air through, ambient air, yeah. chances are your coil will get frozen solid. Sounds smart. Warm air going in the box. Yeah, there's a lot of moisture in that air. There's a, number one, there's a lot of moisture in that air. Number two, the warm air translates into continuous runtime for the system. Continuous runtime for the system translates into lower suction pressure. And they're always under, um, under freezing temperature. So it's going to freeze everything there and freeze and freeze and freeze. And medium temperature system. It's going to get wet. That does not have the cross, it depends on the air defrost. So, it's a bad it's gasket. Off cycle defrost, then it's not never turning off. It's and if it's not turning off, it can't do the off cycle defrost. So it's just going to freeze. Yeah. And also your box temperature will rise because if you have ice build up, yeah, you're no not heat, getting no tra heat, tra heat transfer, therefore the box temperature will begin to go up. Product will spoil. So, bad gaskets translate into longer runtime, which translates into icing problems, which translate into spoiled food. One of the things um, to overcome this, not, they normally put a door closer, which is a little thing on the top of the door yeah. that snaps that door in the last we, inch or so and make sure it's closed tightly. Um, they also recommend that you change the gaskets and door, the freezer door or um, walk-in box door every six months. Really? Really. Six months? Commercial, not yours oh. at home. Commercial systems, every six months you should change it. Because, because of the amount of time it's open and closed, it squeezes the gasket and compresses it. And once it gets compressed, there comes a point where it doesn't have that spring to open up anymore. So it loses the strength to hold onto the arm and fill the space in there. Are those gaskets hard to fit on it, being that the, no, uh, the yeah. temperature's cold, like it'll, uh, you know, won't give it that much play, right? No, if I'm... Um, I mean, that's going to be size, right? No, but I'm, I'm saying, like, with the, with the cold temps, it'll just restrict it, won't give it that much play, so you can get it set, right? If you're changing that? Yeah. No, it's really easy to change, because they're snapped in. Because um, you just pull out, and you get the exact size, and you lay it in, and there's a groove in the door. And you just snap it in, but one thing is, we normally use a little rubber mallet and tap it from the <coughs> and it just snaps right in. It takes about like, um, yeah. 10 minutes to remove one, clean up. I just didn't know if you needed to make it, you know, stretch it a little, make it No, work. you don't even need to stretch it because it's not the exact stretch. Yeah. Sure, you're right. So just give it the exact um, yeah. thing. Yeah. So, okay. you know, it's snapping and you just tap it in, make sure it seats properly. And <laughs> one thing, sometimes you may find they come with a like kind of wavy. We need to take our heat gun and heat the gasket okay. while it's there and it's magnetic. So okay. it's going to expand and the magnet draws it in and it seats properly. You need it gotcha. before you leave the job. You need to have it seat wrong and wrong properly. So the heat gun does that. Do not take the torch. There's a track to, to the gas. Yes, there is a snap in. It's a snapping and track here to just. So you say on regular commercial walking <coughs> and stuff like that, when they grab the doors, you know, <coughs> six months they should be changed. Yes, that's what they recommend. Wow. And that did not come from our recommendation that's as a health. Fact. That's health. No health department oh, recommendation. Okay. It is a recommendation, by the way. Yeah. It's not written in stone. All right. All right. Because broke. I mean, I went on walking boxes and that these people had for so many years, it's fallen mm -hmm. apart. They never change gasket. The box is not working right. You tell them, hey, you need a door gasket, they can't afford it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's your box. Yeah. Uh, that's where you come in, you work miracles. 
No, the only Not miracle. I, the, the only, the only miracle I try to work sometime is try to figure out how the hell can I break set this up so it will just fall apart <laughs> <laughs> and save so me headache. <coughs> you know, there are places where um, I walk into systems and they're so old they're falling apart and the people don't want to spend the money when you make recommendations. So. Bottom line is, I tell them, listen, just lose my phone now. Because you're not going to be able to patch it. Yeah. Patch it, patch it. The moment, the moment you touch the old systems, system, these people believe you're married to that old system. Yeah. Because yeah. anything happens, they call you. And it's easy to call you every 10 minutes. Because you just put it in. And don't have the money for that. Yeah. And then you put a band aid on top of a band aid. Yeah. Yeah. So, Make sure gasket or anything. Now, around those doors, we talk about door heaters. Did we? Yeah. Yes, the mullion. Make sure those mullion door heaters are working. Now, the plastic curtains, their health department requirement. So it has to be there. All right? And now. Sure, um, the, the heaters, make sure they work and you, you can test them and continue, right? Yes. Or you can plug it in and watch it. Feel the heat. What about now, are they, are they, you said the curtains are mandatory now, are they even for long storage, storage containers, storage boxes, they're still? Take them curtains, though. Yeah. Curtains. They're still you can use it in freezers or regular walk-in. Actually, you're supposed storage, to have one. Storage, the long-term storage, or only for when they're opening Most, it now? No, mostly this is a uh, food service application. Yeah, for when they're going in. But if you're, like, if it's, something totally out of, I mean, totally different. You know, like, I can't even um, figure out what the hell is. You can freeze. You know, so Bar uh, maybe if it, like a beverage place, maybe they won't need it, but you see, even with beverage cooler, if you open the door that often, <coughs> it is advisable to have this plastic curtain because it prevents you know, from, from. when you walk in now, the curtain comes back right behind yeah, you. It would, uh, minimize the curtain. It minimizes the, the mm -hmm. cross-contamination, mm -hmm. the air infiltration, mm -hmm. and yeah, install yeah. your door closer. Oh, a lot of restaurants I see this, please close the effing door behind you. <laughs> you know? They have to put that down and they put that, write it up on the door. Yeah. You, know, you will see that. That's a little curtain, and um, you don't have to put it right down to the floor. A few inches off of the floor is okay. So product temperature. Guys, if, if um, product is coming in there, fresh off of the production table and at ambient, you will need to have the box size to do pull down, to go into pull down and pull down pull that down. thing, right? So it has to be like probably double the capacity of a holding box. And the biggest problem in restaurants is they do not load these boxes properly. There is little or no airflow around the product. So you you will have, and this happens a lot, they will call you and say, hey, some of my product is spoiling. Right? But when they pack it, they pack it like this instead of like this. Uh -huh. you know I mean, if I have 50 boxes, I need air flow around each box in order to cool each box Even to the, the evenly and to the right temperature. But if I kiss 10, pack it five boxes high, five deep, and five wide, What's going to happen to the ones in the inside bottom from the outside here? The anywhere. one at the bottom, the ones on the inside from the set. So 50% of my box is exposed to the cooling air, while the other 50% is kind of like insulated. Yeah, by the other products. By the itself. other products, you know, so, you know, That's cardboard. Why they the shelving. That's yeah, the cardboard. the shelves. Cardboard is a really damn good insulation. You know that. Yeah, but that's so it insulates from the product and you have four walls of it. 
it is going to answer it. So you, you do find that when they're ready for the middle part of the product, or the boxes that were in the middle, the food in there is spoiled already. Mold and melt you and what have you. These temperatures here, though, on the, on the left side, the one on the bottom corner is 20 degrees. Yeah, because there is nothing. This is sitting on the floor. Yeah, it's all the insulation. And it's touching the wall. There's something on top, there's something on the side, and there's something there. Yeah. So this can get any kind of air no. here. So, oh, by the way, this is a no-no in food industry. Nothing should be on the floor. That's what I'm saying, the shelves are supposed but to But I still go into... Um, Does that say positive 20? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And this is at zero. Yeah. This is at negative 10 for you, sir. But the ones on the shelves, they're all at negative 10. That's why the shelves are... Yeah. 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 You're gonna uh, show us the, the beacon and the... Uh... Yeah. Oh yeah, that's that tile. Let me see where... Oh, yeah, I see right here. That's tile right there. Yes. 90% of this yeah. stuff right here in the bottom as you go to freezers, them bitch stack just like that. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, just like that, bro. Yeah, right. here, bro. Trust you know, me. You go to the Bahamas, you find it. Listen, right yeah. here. No. I'm telling you, I go into, I go into places and see this. I've seen it all the time. All the time. I've been to plenty places like that. I'm like, guys, you're not supposed to have your food on the floor. You need to put it on a pallet. Yeah, pallet and really shoving. And you have to leave space in between them. That's all. Yes. You have to leave space in between them. And laziness, you know. what some of them do, no, they leave all that space free. there, and they pack everything under this, right up to here. Right, now that can't get that full. Now, now everything here is open space, but they call you to fix this thing, and there's no space for you to get access to that. Because they pack all the food right under there. Guys, what's the sense? You leave all this space on the side here, and you're packing all your food there where there's like zero air flow. What about pallets? Pallets? He said pallets. What about pallets? No. What about them? Yeah, he said yeah. pallets. Oh, you can use pallets. You can put pallet on the floor. Yeah, because there's usually space underneath the pallet. And they made of wood. There's air flow. Turn on that light for me. That light reach. Oh, I know. Ah. All right, brother. Jerry. Whenever you use electric expansion valve, it comes to the, this is the controller board you have to use. What I have here is a, a room temperature sensor, defrost temperature sensor, suction temperature sensor, and what we call a suction transducer, a pressure transducer, which is on the suction line at the bottom. Yes, this one here. So all of these has to be plugged into this board. Their sensor. I think yesterday I showed you guys um, the electric expansion valve and where all those yeah. Yeah, all right, PTCs are located. And this gives you a real-time temperature display. It, it shows you what's the current temperature in the box and what's the set temperature. It flashes between the two. There, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven little buttons here. You can you can use these buttons to program whatever it is temperature you want, change up and down. I can lock this out so that you can only go up or down and change temperature with this if you're the um, the restaurant owner. So you don't even have the ability to raise or lower the temperature. 
if I go in there and I have a problem with ice, I can press this little button here that says um, force defrost, and it will go into defrost melt out that ice for me. There is a button here, I can say for service, which is going to put it into service and give me enough time to do all my tests without changing any parameters on the system. Uh, without this board, that valve is not going to work. All right. So, and unless it sees all of these sensors here, and these sensors are talking to, it, to this board, it's not going to tell that valve for position to go into. It has battery, right? Yes, it does. <laughs> That's a tester for it. See, if you look inside here, That's how the valve opens and closes. Yeah, and um, you will notice how long it takes to open and close. That means I can get very, very small incremental movements that will change my temperature by only about half a degree. And how will I get it? It says steps per second. Yes, it's making 200 steps per second. The so motor. Get That's more. a step of motor. So in 200, you can find, find a control with it. Like so precise control. All the lights blink. Yeah. The lights will blink, but it's going to move. Um, it's not going to react with any significant speed. So 200, so oh. that everybody could see it. Oh, okay. 50 will take you all and 1 will yeah. take you forever. Now, these guys who made this board, pass it around. Here, pass it around. That's heat craft going. They made the original for this beacon system. And um, this one is still in the anti-static um, yeah. thing. Got the same board as that? Well, this is a different manufacturer who came up with this, who copied this. Yeah. So that their system will behave or like that. that. It has or the same thing. Better. It has the same thing. It has two relays. One for defrosting, one to control the fan. Evaporator, mm -hmm. friend, defrosting. Right. And same thing, temperature display. Only thing with this one, there are only two buttons to program this thing. Yeah. So is that more powerful no, or would you rather use set it so I prefer this uh, one. More like because the layout is more simple. See with this, I get um, I get better support from the manufacturer. No, with these man with the manufacturer of these, right? If I have a problem with the board or anything, or I if feel like I call him and tell him here, this part is not functioning right. I need a part. They will overnight it to me free of charge. These guys, I have to be an arm and a leg just overnight. What about all of them? What about all of them? What about all of them? This one only has two to the change the program. I'm going to my pictures. And these these guys reverse engineer that to make this. This is this is a good thing. 
Condenser coil. This goes to the receiver. This this goes to the discharge line. This um actually this comes in the bar in the side. Right. So what happens uh, in the summertime? Let me stand up in front here. In the summertime, the pressure coming out of the receiver is enough to hold that valve here in this position and close it. Okay, just remember that because it's coming on your then I test tomorrow. Uh -huh. It's closing this, right? Just that pressure in the summertime. From the condenser. From the condenser because it has high enough I pressure there. And it, it comes down there into the receiver. Yeah. Low ambient, this pressure is reduced. Then the discharge pressure, this valve opens. And and go straight through. Through. To go straight through and heat up the gas in the receiver and bring, bring up the pressure in the receiver. And then the receiver. So the receiver goes to the liquid. Line. So it is an HPR. It's a, it's a it's, yeah, it's a high pressure. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's what yeah, it's the Open on rise of outdoor oh. ambient. Yes. Because you have the LAC is a head pressure, HPR. Oh, okay. So, okay. so it's really so going HPR by. HPR is everything. HPR this is an ORO. That's, that's an open rise of yeah. In this it's dome it's here, like it's charged with nitrogen. So, nitrogen? Nitrogen. Nitrogen only to. Anyhow, this is 180. Really, I know you guys. I tell you. Hey, water. <laughs> no, this is a. Uh, this is two ten. Oh, sorry. This one here, the nitrogen in here is charged to two hundred and ten psi. Reason I know this is for a Manitoba ice machine, specific to Manitoba ice machine, and um, it's three times as expensive as a regular. And you, you buy it and you stock it. Well, McDonald's has all your ice makers is my Manitoba, can I do service to them? Regulator, you know, I always have those. So uh, what? He says he sees that one second. Regulator. I think this is a head pressure control. Um, 
gender bias. Yeah, that's the, so the, that's to, to keep. So that's the gender bias. 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 That's as the temperature drops in the winter, your pressure drops. You can't force this open and you yes. can't force this closed anymore, and this starts to open. And as this hot gas starts to move so this is the discharge right here from here. Get out this. So the discharge goes down and out, or this way and up. Depending. It goes down. Depending. Directional. This is into the discharge. Right? Yeah. This comes from the condenser. That's out. It goes from the condenser in some tank. Don't do this. With the tire, that fine in there can't keep it in the snow because it's this pressure now is high. No, I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. So it comes, <laughs> this opens, <laughs> and now it will come straight down from the discharge. It's only one way. It's only one way. This is what they just have. So the this is the high end. Let me try it. In the winter time, the hot gas goes right through here. Right through here, from the summertime. In the summertime, it comes to here. The high, that's high on here. Right. Right. In the winter, it comes straight down. The low on here, high on here. All right. That's what I try to do. Oh, it really opens. This one is closed. This one. Five yeah, minutes to the so this one, this one, this one, get out of here. 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 Get out of that's an open rise of outdoor ambient. Open on rise of outdoor ambient. Open on rise of outdoor ambient. It's a head pressure control, but they have a whole bunch of head pressure controls. So certain ones are open on. Look at how this works. All right, here we go. This is the dome there, right? Yes. Yeah. On the straight part, one side goes to this here is the compressor. The hot gas coming out. Discharge. Discharge, right? That goes into the condenser unit. Yeah. That comes right here, but if you notice, that's blocked off. Blocked off. Blocked off. So this can't go anything past that. So it's forcing this hot gas to come through here. It cools. Liquid refrigerant comes here. It goes down here into the receiver. All right. Now, as the ambient gets lower, pressure drops in here. This pressure becomes higher than this pressure. This valve now opens. And that comes down gear. Uh -huh. And this pressure on this keeps that little gate closed. Close there, so therefore this valve is now open and it goes straight into the receiver. So what the hot gas is doing is heating up and pressurizing this liquid that's in there. And this just moves as it needs to according to what's going on. Because but sometimes it stays in that position because just the ambient alone is enough now to condense that gas that comes in here. And when it mixes with that little liquid that's existing there, you don't need that many holes. Okay, so this is totally out of the picture sometimes. To really low ambient. And then when the ambient rises, this pressure overcomes that and flows 
Sometimes you get stuck like that and in the summertime <coughs> you have all this high pressure coming here, all this is just high pressure gas. So it's getting excessive pressure because I'm not cooling anything. You don't know. You change this. Totally. You don't know right away if the head pressure Because it's going to cut out. You need to recycle off. Alright, guys. Anyway, chapter 25, 26, we're going to do the test. Forget about this small book. Not in chapter 10? No, no. Because whatever is in 10 is not 25, 26. I may as well do one book. Um, tomorrow, tomorrow, before we start the test, I'm going to do a review. Yay. Oh, you're the best. What time are you doing it? First thing, first jump. First jump, I'm going to do the review. And, um, second break is the test. Second break is the test. And I am, I am going to do the test. Yeah. So all you need is the open notes. 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 You can use any book, any notes. The moment you take on your phone and you mess around, you get What about so? So you can calculate. Yeah, take pictures. Well, we need a calculator. Well, we need a calculator. Just go slow. Well, we need a calculator. Maybe I don't. How do you make it go fast? Why are you videotaping? <laughs> you don't like it. I think that's that's been. Dial thing makes it. Oh, where am I? You think so? Everything's right there. The two boards there. Yeah, don't fuck it with all that. That's one step. Yeah, this is much faster. 200 steps. 200 steps. So those one step. If you crack it down to one step, it goes beyond. Yeah, she's slower than the turtle on Bunk's body. And it's on 200 yeah. steps. I put the 50, I couldn't even see it. I put it on 50 steps. Yeah, hold on. Hey, shut it up over here. It's so hard to see it, Dan. No, I'm gonna press it. It's fucking high, bro. Yeah, we'll just come. Yeah, just put. No, just put it down. Oh, that's okay. That's good. That's the that's e good? EV and the tester. And the tester. Oh, by the way.